Welcome to the West Ham Transfer Rumour Show, where we take a look at all the gossip surrounding the potential incomings and outgoings at the London Stadium throughout the summer transfer window. And we're going to kick it off with what could be news rather than rumours, because according to our friend Dermesh at Sky Sports, West Ham have made a bid for Tilo Kerrer, the PSG centre-back. The two clubs have been in talks over the last couple of days, but the Hammers have now formally made their initial offer for the German international. And when I say German international, I mean it. He was in their latest squad for the Nations League at the end of last season. We've also got the World Cup coming up in November. So I assume that this is part of the reason why Kerrer's open to a move to the Premier League and West Ham United. I mean, it's li likely to be limited for him if he remains at PSG. And given the situation with our centre-backs at the minute, you'd imagine he'll pick up plenty of time on the pitch for West Ham at the start of the season and just cement his place in that Germany squad for the World Cup. Now, a price... The, the opening bid hasn't really been put out there. That's not been disclosed, just that West Ham have made an offer. However, rumours elsewhere suggest PSG are looking for £17 million for the 25-year-old centre-back with one year to go on his contract. He's also got experience playing full-back, some playing left-back, but not very much. Most of his full-back experience comes playing at the right-back position. Has played many games in a back four and a back three. In a back three, he's usually playing on the right of the centre-back there as well. And I think this ticks all the boxes for West Ham and for David Moyes, for the situation we're in. And I've really started to warm to the idea of signing him. Now, I have to admit my opinion is based on what I've seen him do for Schalke over in the Bundesliga. I don't really recall him playing for Germany. Obviously, he has. I've watched games where he has played for Germany, but I can't recall any performances from him. So I wasn't watching for him, though, so it's, it's easy to miss him if you know what I mean but in regards to his time at PSG again I've probably seen him play some games but I haven't really noticed him so my opinion is based off what I saw from him in Germany and what I remember because he was quite a bit younger when he was playing for Schalke read the game really well really athletic got a bit of speed about him but uses his body well in terms of physique comfortable with the ball at his feet maybe a little bit too comfortable out of possession because I remember at Schalke if I'm Assuming I'm not getting muddled up with someone, I'm sure they used to run out of defence quite a lot to close down the opposition. We've seen Diop do it last time as well, so maybe he is the perfect replacement for Issa Diop. But yes, that's the news that West Ham are have submitted a bid for Tilo Kerrer and he's our number one target to get in to replace Issa Diop ahead of the game against Nottingham Forest. So it's a little bit of a race against time for West Ham. We've only got a couple of days to get this done because the player needs to be registered by 12 o'clock on Friday, as we know, we found out the hard way with Maxwell Corney while we had to watch Kukavea playing for Chelsea despite signing on Friday as well. So... A little bit of pressure to get this done. There is other targets. We'll get on to a couple of them as well. But as I said yesterday in the video with Gonzo of Garden Diop, who is currently undergoing his full medical, by the way, I don't like there will be a list. West Ham will have players we've already scouted. Because we got near for Guardian, the list wouldn't have contained a Guardian. That's it. There would have been alternatives there that we have done our research on. Call it second choice and third choice, if you like. And when you look at Kerr, I think there's some similarities between him and Neva Guerd as well. The same age, the price tag, I mean Kerr is a little bit cheaper, but in regards to being comfortable with the ball at his feet and his passing attributes, that's ticking the similar boxes as well. So I, I do believe this rumour, I do believe we have made a bid, and the more I think about it, the more I warm to it as well actually, the fact he's pretty versatile, like I said, it's very comfortable in a 3 or a 4 good age price tags reasonable as well and there is still another element a bit like yesterday's video there is an element of other players that were being linked to or being discussed as potential replacements for Issa Diop that I'd rather not see so when it comes to the likes of Kerr I'm like yes please can we have him so we don't have to get that one and um, so we'll wait and see I think there's um I think this story this transfer is going to escalate pretty quickly over the next couple of days given that we're under a little bit of pressure to get him in if it comes to left backs I think the club might feel they can be a little bit patient and they don't necessarily have to get that left back in before the Nottingham Forest game. But in regards to the centre back, there is a race against time here. Um, Attila Salia, we been, we discussed him last night as well, the Fenerbahce centre back. Earlier on today, there was a Turkish reporter suggesting that West Ham had had a bid of around 14.5 million, 17 million euros, 14.5 million pounds accepted 
by the Turkish giants for West Ham United to then talk to their Hungarian centre-back. They look like they've jumped the gun a little bit. Other reports suggest that's not quite true, but that he is a potential target, that he is a potential player that we will go after should we not get Kerr, but it looks like Tilo Kerr is the number one target currently. Now, shall we discuss Tyrone Mings? Before we do, this video is sponsored by the One Football app, and it's the best way to keep up to date with all these transfer rumors. I'm not doing a transfer rumor show tomorrow night. I've got another topic I wish to discuss. It's transfer related, but it's based on what David Moyes has said. So to keep up to date with all the transfer rumors between now and the next one, you can do it via the One Football app. You can get that by clicking the link in the description so they know you've come from Harisha and it's completely free to download. So if you're looking for an app that gives you all the news for West Ham and only West Ham, gives you the transfer gossip for West Ham and only West Ham, which tells you all the fixtures around the Premier League, all the scores around the Premier League, gives you statistics for your West Ham players. When you go into it, you click on the West Ham squad, you can click on the West Ham players, it'll give you their age, it'll tell you how they're getting on this season, how many appearances they've played, so on and so forth. It is a fantastic app for the football fan and if you don't believe me because you might think you do bang on about this app quite a lot if you don't believe me download it yourself and give it a try and then next time i mention the app you'll say actually i do recommend downloading that app i downloaded it on the 9th of august and it's a thoroughly good app get downloaded links in the description below now tyrone mings i mean first of all before we discuss the player, let's discuss the rumour here. There isn't actually a rumour. The rumour was, this might become a rumour. How do you, I, I don't know. Honestly, I don't know. So basically, X basically said, Just keep an eye out for Tyrone Mings. We're not being linked to him at the minute, but someone we might get linked to in the future or something like that. Then it sort of snowballed from there and everybody started giving their opinion on the potential signing of Tyrone Mings. And I'm, I'm going to join in. I'm going to give you mine as well. So we're not actually linked to him yet but it's almost like the topic at the minute i wouldn't want him and um, there is one thing that makes me want him and it's let's call it craig dawson factor um because i, I really didn't want craig dawson and he's come in he's done really well under david moyes but i do think dawson has done the job required of him but yeah, here we are. When when we send another centre back, we send a word. Most people want to see a word and Zuma. Well, why is that? Because Dawson's the weaker of the two centre backs out of Zuma and Dawson. Okay, so it was a good signing, but that's all. And I think for two million, it was incredible value. But it was almost a bit of a I don't want to say stopgap signing because that sounds a bit harsh. But that's how I see it. And I think Tyrone Mings would be on that level. Obviously, had the captaincy taken off in this summer by Steven Gerrard, given to John McGinn. Now, I don't think that reflects Tyrone Mings as a captain, if I'm being honest. Now, obviously, I'm not really in a position to comment on that. That's for Aston Villa fans. But from a neutral, from an outsider looking in, I don't think there's any questions over him, him as a professional or him as a leader and captain. I think it was just Steven Gerrard almost making it easier to drop him. Obviously, they signed Diego Carlos in the summer. And I've always felt Mings was their weaker centre-back out of the partnership of him and Konsa. And he's the, Mings is sort of the, the centre-back version of Adama Traoré when it comes to me and Gonzo. Gonzo loves Tyro Mings. Me, I'm not a big fan of him. I think he's a bit of a liability for Aston Villa. I think they're better off without him in the starting eleven. Would I like him at West Ham? On loan, sure. I think he would do a job. But permanently buying him? I don't think so. I mean, he's a good player. He's a good Premier League centre-back. But we want, we should be wanting better than that at West Ham. We're trying to get in players who could be or could become Champions League level players, essentially. And that's not what Tyrone Mings is. He's sort of like a comfortable mid-table centre-back. And if that's what we want to do, then that's a good signing for us. But we've got to want to kick on from that we have kicked on from that in the last couple of seasons finishing sixth and seventh and i think if we want to keep doing that maintaining our position which is difficult just consolidating in that six seven places is hard to do then i think we've got to be aiming for a little bit better than tyrone mings personally um listen i wouldn't be disappointed if he came i wouldn't be worried i think we'd see good performances out of him i think we'd see bad performances out of him but isn't that the reason we're getting rid of this deal? Because he's inconsistent. I think we'd be swapping one inconsistent player for another. The advantage of Tyro Mings 
would bring is he's home growing which i think we're doing okay for numbers on actually i might do that video tomorrow maybe if people want it i'll do it a squad update i did it at the start of the summer didn't i just where we are in terms of homegrown players and uh, out of our 25 man squad how many spaces have we actually got to fulfill because we brought in the likes of Cornet. and i don't think there's as many spaces as some people think anyway um uh, i've already mentioned the um the deal medical but just going by my list deal's having his medical at film today here we go now here's a player that will people will be rubbing their hands at this is one of when we do these videos we'll all everybody gives their thoughts in the comments which we encourage and i like reading i've read them a lot more in the last quite a while now year maybe than i used to i never used to read them because i used to just assume it was full of like grief you know stick and i thought well why do i want to read comments slagging me off and um when we first started um youtube or i say first started i mean it was a year two years in someone used to make fake accounts and leave comments about me wearing heaven aids so i just thought well i don't want to read that stuff it upsets me so i'm not going to read it but now in the last year i've got better at replying to people i think and um nobody's left any comments about me being deaf so i'm i'm, I'm okay with it i'm all right with it but one of the what you do is you pick up you gauge opinions and what people want to see at west ham and you start to know the opinions of certain posters that post regularly too but one name that used to pop up a lot and still does is Coot Miners. Um, went to Atalanta last summer from AZ Alkmaar. He went over there, not for very much either, about 12 million or something. He went to Atalanta, a defensive midfielder, a Dutch international, 24 years of age. Now, I've seen limited um, time of him. Atalanta's probably the Italian club I've watched most up until last summer, funnily enough. And I haven't really seen them as much last season. Um, but prior to that, they were a bit like Frankfurt in terms of excitement going forward and scoring goals, weren't they? With Zapata leading the line. So I used to watch quite a bit of them, but not so much anymore. But whenever I did watch them, I always used to get confused as to why Deroon was playing for them. I always thought, there's a guy uh, much better than I ever thought he would be. But anyway, Coop Miners has been linked to West Ham. It's thought that West Ham are sort of inquiring about the potential availability of him, although it seems unlikely. Now, I'm going on reputation here, and it does seem a little bit unrealistic, doesn't it? But I know a lot of people watching this have said, get him to West Ham now. There's a player that Champions League level. Let's get him in now. Um, I know a lot of people like him. Also, Paqueta, who we played against last season for Lyon. He's sporadically been linked to West Ham. I don't think there's anything in that rumour either. I mean, a talented player, but I think he's just a bit overpriced by what I saw against West Ham. I don't watch French football. I'm pretending I've got an opinion on Paqueta. I don't really. I actually thought he a nice, tidy footballer, really. Um, classy, I, I suppose, is the words I would describe him with, but... I think Leon are wanting big, big money for him. And I'm meh. I'm just a bit meh about it. But I don't believe the rumours, so that helps. Now, I'm going to talk about Gonzo's video. Now, that's the rumours done with. So you're only here for the rumours. It's the end of the show for you. But before you go away, do drop a like on it and subscribe to the channel. But if you want to stick around for a bit of an opinion piece, I'm hiding it at the back of this video because it's not worth doing a video on its own. Earlier today, and it is in relation to transfers though, earlier today, Gonzo did a video saying that we need another striker and he gave his reasons you go check out you haven't done already but i disagree with him i don't think we need another striker mainly for two reasons one finances i just i don't think we've run out but i think we're trying to spend the majority of the money on a center midfielder looking at the bids for amadou onana for 33 million James Ward Prowse, we were looking at around 40, 50 million. They wanted a lot more, but we were in the market for a 50 million centre midfielder. Calvin Phillips, 50 million pound bid. So it looks like we've got a lot of money for centre midfielder. So I'd imagine that means it's a little bit sparse elsewhere to spend, especially on the strikers when we've already spent 36 million on um, Gianluca Scamacca. So that's one reason. But the main reason is I think we've got adequate cover now. Which is, we've also got Skamaka in, we've got Antonio, two really good Premier League, well, one really good Premier League striker and sort of Italy's future number nine, who we expect to do well, look quite bright against Manchester City. So that's obviously the main two men. Now, should we need option number three? I do feel at the minute, 
we've got enough cover with Jared Bowen and Maxwell Cornet. When you I watched that video with Cornet on official West Ham YouTube with Governor B, at the end of it, he sort of asks Maxi, he basically says, you play all down the left-hand side, you know, what kind of player are you or something like that. And he basically laughed and said, I score goals. He basically said, I want to score goals. I wouldn't say he just missed playing left back, but he's, his reaction was, I, I, the further up the pitch, the better, as far as he's concerned. So, And he's got plenty of experience playing as a centre-forward as well, scores goals in that position. And I just think, if you ever are on your third-choice striker, something's gone wrong, either two players have got injured, there's a sus suspension and injury, players badly out of form, and when I say players, I'm also referring to Antonio Skmaka here. But I think short term, you can get away with putting Corny up front for two or three games or Bowen up front for two or three games and then focusing on the attacking midfielder. Right now, we had 20 million to spend. I don't think it gets you the best striker in the world. Ben Bevson Diaz is probably the perfect player in this instance. He can play up front, can also play on the left or the right, covers various different positions. But I'd rather see us go after probably an attacking midfielder or a winger so that if you had to move Bowen up front, somebody can come in on the right-hand side, or you move Cornet up front. You know, I wouldn't be against, I know not everybody will agree with me here, I wouldn't be against a front four of Bowen, for now, Ben Rama, and Cornet up front. Now, I know it doesn't seem the most exciting, but this is where I'd rather bring in another attacking midfielder. I'm trying to think of who we've been linked to. Let's just say um, Sar, Sar of Watford, for example. Now, picture this one. Corne on the left. For now, it's Orban Ram in number 10. You choose. You pick whichever one you prefer. Sar on the right and Jared Bowen up front. Suddenly, that attack doesn't sound too bad, in my opinion. But I just think we'd be better off with an attacking midfielder that can challenge Corne, can challenge Ben Rama, can challenge Bowen. And then can also allow those two players to cover that striker if we ever needed it. It'd be interesting to see what we do because the Telegraph, where you can get Jacob Steinberg's report, suggests that we're going to bring in three players, but three players are also going to leave with Diop being one of them and Vlasic and Ben Rama. And if that happens, I'm not sure three coming in is enough. I think we need a bit more than that. So it sounds like at the minute, centre back is priority, followed by centre midfield. And then left back and attacking midfield slash winger as well on top of that. So four players potentially coming in. But then three players potentially leaving as well. So we'll wait and see. There's plenty of time to go in the window. What is it? The 9th today it shuts on the 1st of September. So there's plenty of time left. Three weeks for West Ham to get players in. But between now and then... Between now and the window closing, we've got six games starting with Nottingham Forest on Sunday. And we need to make sure we've got at least one signing in for that. Ideally two, but I can't see it, can you? I don't think so. Hopefully, hopefully it'll be Tilo Kerr. Um, I find myself really wanting that transfer to happen. But now I'm going to shut up. Now I'm going to disappear. I'll be back tomorrow talking about comments David Moyes has made in regards to... The transfer window, I just find it interesting. Um, drop a like on the video if you enjoyed it. Subscribe if you're new around here. And catch you tomorrow.